A career in finance is one of the most lucrative in the world with a potential six-figure salary straight out of university in a clear career progression track. So let's go over the top five skills you need to break into the industry. And we're talking about technical skills that you can learn. So not soft skills like teamwork, communication, or problem solving. So let's get into it. The first skill we have is financial accounting, which is the foundation for any finance role. Understanding the three main financial statements, which as a reminder are the income statement, which reflects a company's profitability over a period of time, showing the revenue, the expenses, and the net income. Secondly, it's the balance sheet, which shows the company's financial position at a specific point in time, including the assets, liabilities, and equity. And finally, the cash flow statement, which tracks the flow of cash in and cash going out of the company. Other than knowing the three main statements, you should also know how they connect. For example, here you can see that they have a lot of different connection points like depreciation, we've got the net income, we've got current assets, and much more. Similar to the previous example, other than how they connect, you should also be able to do a quick calculation in your head. For example, a super common interview question is how would a $10 increase in depreciation expense affect the three financial statements? A question like this is testing your understanding of the three financial statements and how they interconnect. And feel free to pause the video to look at the answer in further detail. The second skill you should know, which builds on the financial accounting foundation, is financial statement analysis, where using ratios, historical figures, and benchmarks from other competitors, you're able to assess how your company is performing. Something like this is crucial for investment purposes, for internal strategy, and even for credit analysis. And there's really four main types of ratios that you should know. First up are profitability ratios, which measure a company's ability to generate profits from its operations. Some common ones include the return on assets, the return on equity, or the gross margin. Secondly, we've got liquidity ratios, which measure a company's ability to meet short-term obligations when we say short term in accounting, we refer to things that are one year or less. So if they're above the one year mark, then it's considered a long term obligation. Common examples here are the current ratio and the quick ratio. Thirdly, we've got activity ratios, which focus on how effectively a company is using its resources to generate sales and profit. These are also referred to as efficiency ratios. And some of the most common ones include the inventory turnover ratio, and the accounts receivables turnover ratio. Lastly, we have leverage ratios, which measure a company's long-term debt sustainability. Some of the common ratios here are the debt to equity ratio or the debt to EBITDA ratio. One fun and really common exercise to test your understanding of financial statement analysis is known as a ratio detective exercise. So let's take a look at one over here. Basically, it says using these metrics, find out what figures belong to each industry. So all of these percentages that you can see here are a percentage of sales or a percentage of revenue. We've got some figures on the balance sheet and some other ones on the income statement down below. And the idea is that based on all of these metrics, we should be able to tell what company or what industry these companies are in. If you want to challenge yourself with this type of exercise, you can actually find it somewhere up here where I created a video specifically on that and I walk through each answer and the reason why. In number three, we've got financial modeling, which is the process of forecasting future outcomes based on historical data. This is typically done in Excel, as you can see over here, and it's crucial for making decisions about future investments, capital budgeting, and valuation. Within financial modeling, I would say there's three core skills you should learn. And the first one is building forecasts. As you can see over here, we have the actual years, which are up to 2024. And from 2025 onwards, these are all forecast years. In order to build these, you need some sort of assumptions. Those are the parts here in blue, where we've got the assumptions for revenue growth, for cost of goods sold as a percentage of revenue, R&D, and SG&A. That brings us to our second core skill, which is scenario analysis. You might have noticed we're looking at the base case here, but we've also got a best case and a worst case. The idea is that based on this toggle that we have over here for the scenario, if we choose the best case, you'll see how our forecasted numbers update. Same thing goes if we choose the worst case. And the reason we want something like this is that when we're forecasting values, we're not always certain of the outcome. 
So it's best to have a few different scenarios. Thirdly, we've got valuation, which is the process of valuing the worth of a company or maybe of a specific department within a company. Typically, this is done with a discounted cash flow, as you can see over here, as well as other valuation methods like a comparable companies analysis and a precedent transactions analysis. So let me quickly show you here what the discounted cash flow looks like. You can see we have the actual years here with the A at the end, and then we have all of the estimate years. We go all the way down to the free cash flow down over here. And then from there, we have to discount all of these cash flows back to the present, which is what's going on in this whole area down here. With that information, we then reach what's known as the implied share price for the company. And we also have some ranges. So if our assumptions were to change slightly, which is all of this area right here and this area over to the side, how will our actual share price be affected? So you can see based on this example, it goes from 175 all the way to 184 if our assumptions were to change. All of this is what's known as a sensitivity table. That's a very brief overview of financial modeling. And actually all of these examples I've just shown you, we teach from scratch in our complete finance and valuation course. To give you an idea of what the course entails, first we cover financial statement analysis using Apple's real annual report as an example. Then we get into financial modeling through a three statement model on Apple. After that, we begin the valuation phase where you learn to do a discounted cash flow, a comparable company's valuation, and a precedent transactions valuation on Apple, looking at their real financial statements to eventually derive a valuation range. Lastly, we'll show you how to present an investment thesis using a stock pitch format. So if you're interested in checking these out, head over to the link in the description below. In number four, we've got Microsoft Office skills. And more specifically, I'm talking about Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook, which is actually where you'll be spending over 80% of your time. That's why learning the right shortcuts, formulas, and features is gonna save you literally hours of time. For example, inside of Excel, you should know all of the essential formulas like the X lookup, the F statement, or the index match function. You should also know how to use the Alt key shortcuts. You'll notice when I press the Alt key once, we start to see all of these different letters. And the idea is that you don't have to use the mouse and eventually you're gonna become a lot faster by using these letters then clicking with the mouse. So for instance, I can press Alt H H here to go ahead and change the background color, Alt H F C to change the actual font color, and then Alt H B A to add a border like that. For formatting the actual value, I can do Alt H P to change this into percentage format and Alt H zero to add a decimal place too. Those are just some basic examples in Excel, but the same thing applies to PowerPoint. For example, over here, when I add a new slide, maybe I just wanna add a logo. Quickly now, I'm just gonna put a shape as the logo just to show you. Let's suppose that we've got this logo over here. The problem is when we add a new slide, you'll notice that that logo now disappears. So instead, you should be able to use things like the Slide Master, which is basically this part over here. If we go over to the View tab and I click on this Slide Master tool, just press on that once. And the idea is that if I scroll all the way to the bottom and just paste that shape on the side. Now, if I press Close Master View, you'll notice that that logo is on every slide. And even when I create new slides in the future, that logo is always going to be there. These are some of the shortcuts that I think in the long run are going to save you a huge amount of time. And do let me know in the comments if you want a separate video entirely on shortcuts. And finally, in number five, we've got data analysis and business intelligence. This consists of skills like SQL, Power BI, or Python. And it's important to clarify here that for certain finance roles, it's really not necessary. For example, in an investment banking role, you're really not going to use any of these. Instead, you'll just be focusing on Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook like we've mentioned earlier. That said, at a financial analyst role in a corporate like what could be Procter & Gamble, then you're probably likely going to need or at least be expected to learn SQL, Power BI, Python, and a few other skills. In short, SQL is essential for managing and analyzing data sets that are just too large for Excel to handle. It allows users to extract, manipulate, and query data efficiently, as you can see over here. Secondly, Power BI is a powerful data visualization software that you can see right here that is primarily used for dashboards and reports. It's fully interactive and it helps finance professionals transform raw data into interactive dashboards like this one right here, which is an example that we teach in our Power BI course. 
Thirdly, Python is a versatile programming language that is used increasingly often in finance. It's able to handle complex financial calculations, perform statistical analysis, and automate workflows, making it very valuable in finance. And again, right here is a sample of what the interface looks like. Awesome, so those are the top five skills that you need to break into the finance industry. And if you wanna test yourself with a ratio detective exercise, you should watch this video over here, or you can take our complete finance evaluation course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.